This is Atea, or better known as Great Barrier Island, because that's what Captain Cook called it on his voyages here. Because it acts as a barrier between the Pacific Ocean and the Hauraki Gulf. And while it's only 62 miles from the modern city center of Auckland, it feels like a land far, far away. A lush sanctuary of Maori ancestral land that is completely off the grid. So naturally, life here moves slower and it requires a certain amount of self-reliance, which is probably why we're loving it so much. It's a familiar rhythm similar to life on our floating home, connected to both the modern and natural world, aware of our mutual relationship and always seeking balance. been wind wind and more wind that's all we've had it has been a breezy start to the season but we have managed to do a fair bit of foraging since we have been here we've been collecting mussels and our friend Rick took us around to his secret that was a bird okay <laughs> took us around to his secret lobster spot which because it was a secret, we weren't allowed to film, but we did come home with a lobster. And today we are gonna go collect some cockles. And for those of you that have been following along for a little while, then you also know that I recently drowned our drone. <laughs> but thanks to our friends at DJI, I have got a new drone. <laughs> and this is the one I have been wanting and waiting on for ages. So finally, the new DJI Mavic 3 is out and all the new updates. I'm very excited about that, but unfortunately, because it is very windy, we will be flying very low today. We will not be taking it up very high, though, you know, a little gun shy after the last one, which was also flying in winds above the recommended. Like today. But yeah, yeah, anyway. And not only that, but we've got the new action camera and fancy new microphones that we also need to test out. So lots of playing and foraging. Digging. And yeah. Let's go. Ta da! Woo! It's going to be exciting. Call my number. Call my name. <laughs> if you want it. Woo. It's got to be blowing at least 20 knots. It was 28 earlier. Please. I'm feeling this is going to be a very wet ride. Oh, okay, let's do it. Don't look at our dirty bottom. We still have cleaning to do. <laughs> so, so true. Em so embarrassing. <laughs> Here comes a bullet. It's always weird when you can't see the bottom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Mm. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> nice sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the cockle shells. That's what we're going after today. Okay. You ready to get muddy? Get muddy. Get muddy. Woo! <laughs> cockles just sit in the mud or in the sand, but here it's kind of a muddy bay, so we're definitely in mud. But you just kind of start to move your feet around and then you can feel them underneath there. Now that is not a cockle. <laughs> that is a rock. <laughs> kind of like panning for gold a little bit. I mean, look at that. Just put your hand in and you come up with a whole feast of them. I don't like to take the really little ones, so I give those guys back. Just take the medium to large size ones. Although, according to the fishing regulations here, there is no minimum size. 
on cockles and we can take up to 50 each which is a lot that's quite the feast we live out here on the water so we don't need to take that many we just grab enough for dinner and that's all we need What's really neat is now we can have the drone flying and still record audio. Without having to have another camera rolling. Yeah. Oh. Can you hear me from up there? <laughs> Just down here? Mic check. Get check one, goggles. two. <laughs> See, there's like a little hole for it to breathe. So that's what we're looking for. And then, look at that. Nice. Easy peasy. Jeez, where'd the sun come from? I know, right? It's a different world on land. It's like you wouldn't even know it's blowing 30 knots over there. Oh, so many underneath my feet. I mean, yeah. look at that. Yeah, that is a handful. Oh, he's no longer uh, in there. Uh, that was a big one. <laughs> oh, obviously the birds already beat me to him. So this is the new quick shot rocket mode. Is that right? Yep. Which is cool because here we are picking cockles and not one of us is having its thing. Yeah. Ha, look at that one. Yeah. That's a good size one. Nice. Good haul. Let's count our bounty. Whoa, that's an oyster. <laughs> <laughs> so weird, because you think you're walking on rocks, but it's just a whole bunch of cockles under there. There are just that many, which is great. They're nice and healthy. Sustainable. Had a little bit of an incident. A cockle kerfuffle. It's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> we had a cockle kerfuffle. <laughs> cockle kerfuffle. <laughs> I can't say it once, much less three times. We had a cockle kerfuffle. <laughs> no. <laughs> we had a cockle kerfuffle. Jason cut his foot up on one of the oyster shells out there, but he got all cut here and then two nice long gashes just just sliced like a knife perfect look at that just hurt. just wow yeah yeah does that hurt no okay good <laughs> we are gonna patch him up before we do cockle cleaning yes the lovely thing about being on a boat is that your feet are consistently wet and touching everything and you don't really wear shoes and salt water is pretty much like your enemy in this yeah. environment because there's all kinds of bacteria in there. So you get it wet again, get bacteria on it, just it can become a nightmare for stuff to actually heal and can breed a lot of bacteria for infections. Now we're gonna gauze it and tape it up. I wasn't gonna film this, but then I saw like it was a pretty good gash and I was like, oh, well, it's a good reminder that like we do get hurt and stuff happens. There we go. Thank you. Yes, no walking outside for a little bit for you. All right. Okay. These are all of our little cockles we're going to eat for dinner. And I've let them set in just some nice fresh seawater for half an hour or so while we cleaned up Jason's foot. And now I'm going to give them just a light little scrubbing. I don't know that it's really necessary with some of them. They're really not that dirty, but I'll give them a little scrubbing. There is just something about free food 
And when you go and you get it yourself, you know where you got it from, my favorite. It doesn't matter whether we're looking for edible plants on land or shellfish and lobster or seaweed. It just feels good. That whole self-reliance thing. You know you could survive out here. All in your lonesome. Got a grocery store. Be fine. Most important part of the cooking process. We know. Just a little bit of coconut oil. Onions. Little bit of coconut cream. Fortunately. There are no coconut trees that I know of in New Zealand, so we can't harvest our own coconuts anymore and get cream. Buy it from a can. Fresh herbs. I harvest a little too often, but they're hanging in there and they work. A little bit of basil, chive. Already got our first one opening up. Cool. Okay, that means it's time for garlic. <laughs> mm, everything's better with butter. Chili. I'm taking them all out so that I can reduce down my sauce in here a little bit, but not overcook my clams or my cockles. Hey. See how this is. Needs pepper. Fresh loaf of bread. Made that earlier today. Nothing beats a bread maker. I'll have all my gadgets probably equally, but I don't know that I could live without the bread maker. It just makes it so easy. Yeah. Sauce is looking good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to toss in some broccoli because greens, vegetables, very important. I might as well warm those up in that lovely salt. We're also going to put these guys back in just to incorporate everything. Put a lid on that. Turn that down to just low while I make myself some toast. We want these pretty toasty. I'm gonna go for a six. Almost forgot the most important part. Finishing it off with a little lemon and lime juice. Very excited. It's gonna be good. I should make sure we're in the shot. <laughs> I didn't look at that before. Oh, barely. Let's the bread is for. Taste the fruits of our labor. Wasn't much labor. Mm, just a little bit of heat, brightness from the lemon and lime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. mm, creaminess from the. Mm. Yummy. It was worth. Worth the cut. Oh yeah, that 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 was yeah. <laughs> mm. We've never had cockles before. They are very tender and they do remind me of clams, but sometimes I almost think they're less chewy than clams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a fan of the cockles. I was hungry than I thought. Oh, that was so good. <sighs> I got it. A cockle catastrophe. That's easier to say. Yeah. Okay. But a kerfluffle was pretty good too. Yeah. It's just impossible. It's impossible to say. Cockle kerfluffle. Then that is a tongue twister. If you can manage that one three times fast, record that, Instagram, and tag me. <laughs> did you put oil in on yet? Yes, I already did that. I did? You want me to put some more in there? <laughs> Roll back that footage. <laughs> I didn't on camera, I did it down there when I was cleaning. Okay. Are you sure you did? Yes! I already did that. I can't, why do you think this is sticking? Oh, okay.
I am the nurse, you are the patient. <laughs> so doctor, uh, I've been on the internet and I think I have. <laughs> I'm just kind of doing this, not really paying attention to what I'm actually doing. <laughs> You're sitting here bandaging for film and, and that's not really nope. for me. Nope. <laughs> Put oil on yet?